In this episode, I fix a mess the farmer made of this cow's hoof, we use magical wizardry to detect lameness, and this cow has a serious issue, and Craig has an itch that needs scratched. This is the Hoof GP. Every second Friday, we start at half six for this amazing farm. This is the Hoof GP. Let's see what treasures we find today. Winter is properly coming right now. It's almost pitch black just now. It's 6.30. Hey, I look much better like this. The lighting really suits me. Ooh. Every second Friday is the only day I actually pick Craig up now. He usually arrives at the house for 7.30. It's quite nice all the time the I think I need to fix that. Quite nice, always having the same start time. Apart from this every second Friday. Anyway, let's crack on and see how Craig's feeling this morning. Yeah, I'll fix that. Yeah, I've got like every warning like possible. Looks like a little Christmas tree going on here. Nice. Ah, uh, here she is. Morning. Good morning. So we've only got about 10 miles to go to get to this farm. So it doesn't take long at all. We've got about 300 cows milking and they are producing some of the best numbers in the whole of Scotland. They're producing over 40 litres of cow, milking twice a day, which is immense. They just look after their cows really, really well. We arrive at this farm just before dawn and it's bitterly cold this morning. The cows have just been finished milking and as we get there, Sarah is doing the usual. She's using the old scraper tractor to clean the place up so it's nice, fresh and tidy for us to get ready. This is really typical of how we enter the premises. Nowhere is perfect, nowhere is built specifically for us to get our crush into. And luckily for us, this one actually isn't too bad, but it is on a really steep incline. You'll notice we're on a bit of a hill, so we need to put rubber mats under the front of it to try and level the crush up. This is actually probably the only place that we do that. Well, to this extent anyway, sometimes we put one or two in, but here we need four or five. So we have about 29 cows to do first, and this is a line back for Daddy's Murphy. You don't see many milking cows like that. It's always a race and a bit of a relief to get the first cow in the crush. And when we're at this farm, there's not too much trouble at all. As you can see, the majority of the cow's feet are just like this one. They just need a small rebalance, a good model out, and a really rigorous check over before we can let them go. It's maybe the case the majority of the time, but it's definitely not the case 100% of the time, as you're just about to see. I love trimming at farms like this, and it's not hard to see why. I try to figure out who I am. Not sure what I'm doing here And the days don't work out the way I thought they would And before you there was no one who understood Never found somewhere I fit in Until I met you I was feeling lost But you're the one who can Go away. See what I like at the back. Craig does the fronts. 
the back right. And Sarah says she's lame on the back right. Usually when we visit this farm, Sarah, the young girl who milks the cows, works alongside us, which is actually fantastic because she knows which cows are lame and usually which foot they're lame on. So we know exactly where we should be checking if it's not immediately obvious. Clearly, this cow has a very obvious problem, and actually, Sarah's boss, Paul, the owner of this farm, has done a fantastic job of trimming her foot out, and as Craig's sticking a block on that back foot, I move over to this front foot to give it a little polish up, before we see what we can do to fix that back right foot. So this cow first became lame around three weeks ago and Paul, the owner of this farm, attacked it with a knife and grinder and he's done a fantastic job, he really has. I can tell that she's clearly better than she once was. That's because I can see where the blood has been seeping into the hoof horn as it's begun to regrow. Personally, I would have modelled her out even more than Paul had and as we've gone to do that, we've revealed an ulcer hidden beneath the surface of the hoof horn. We dress the whole foot in iodine and Craig gives it a wrap with a bandage as I move on to this back left foot just to make sure it's as perfect as can be. She has very early signs of a slight digital dermatitis infection so I spray it with Repiderma and move on to shaping that wooden block. I need to remove the front corner of this block Otherwise, she'll catch it every time she swings her leg. There we go. That's her done and dusted, and we can move on with the rest of the trims. So this cow's lame on her front right foot, and we're struggling. Craig, sorry, Craig, we're struggling to see exactly where she was lame. And we've got a little gadget that helps. This is a thermal imaging camera, and if we look at the left-hand side of the screen, you can see her foot is glowing red hot. That means there's clearly an infection. And if we look here, it looks like there's nothing wrong. But because we know it's glowing, if we push here really hard, you can see the skin's ruffling, and that means there's a cavity underneath. A very small one. There's still a cavity. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this cow has a serious issue and she's going to need a block. So we crack the grinder straight out to prepare it to bovie bond on a block to get the weight off that foot. I absolutely love bovie bond. I go on about it all the time, not because I'm sponsored, but because I want you guys to use bovie bond because it really will help your cows. I've never used a glue that is as consistent as this. It works every single time. This cow has a problem in her white line and I'm expecting this little black dot to link all the way to the top of her heel. I need to err on the side of caution though because this problem is a seriously painful one. The order of the day for a cow's foot like this is little by little, piece by piece until the job is complete, and trims like this do take an awful lot longer than just a standardised routine trim. But as you'll see, she really does need this attention to detail. Right now, this hoof looks fairly good. It looks pretty normal, and if we didn't know what was lurking beneath, we could think that there was nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But stay tuned folks, you're just about to see exactly what is wrong. I'm concentrating on this black spot in the white line because I know for certain that there is a break there. So if I can find the start of the break, I can track it all the way back to its origins and hopefully set her on the road to recovery. We're finally getting somewhere, the cavity is starting to be revealed, but we still don't know the full extent. The whole of this cow's soul could come away. Yeah. 
As I carefully navigate my way through this cow's trim, I'm trying to thin out the hoof sole. That's so that I can get a gauge or a handle on how far this cavity extends across the entirety of her sole. I don't want to remove any more than I have to, but I need to remove everything I want to, if that makes sense. I'm starting to have to use too much force to remove the remaining hoof horn, so I use the grinder to thin out that sole even more. It's not because I'm lazy, but it's because it'll bring about increased accuracy, which as you can probably see, is massively important. We've exposed very delicate tissue to the outside elements, so we dress it with iodine and wrap it, just to make sure that that iodine stays in contact with the cow's foot for as long as possible. Once that's done, she's good to go, and with a quick goodbye and thanks very much from the cow, we can move on with trimming the rest of the cows. My heart is open, it just took some time Now I just hope that you'd stay for a little while You fix what's broken when you make that smile so A lot of the cows here have got fantastic feet, there's only a few minor problems So you get through them pretty quick Trimming at a farm here that really, really is invested in making sure their cow's feet are perfect, it's a proper pleasure, it really is. Putting blocks on a cow's foot like this, who has thin soles and bruising, is massively worthwhile. We've stopped this cow going lame completely, even before she is lame. And that in turn will stop her going lame again in the future, because once a cow has been lame, she's much more likely to go lame again. It might seem like she only has a very small problem here, but it's still a problem, and this block should completely stop it from happening. All we've got left to do, guys, is trim these last three cows, wash up, and head on home. So thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do. Catch you later. Bye bye. Oh.